Boise's real estate market is flooded with inventory, they say. Fact or fiction? Stay tuned and find out. Okay, so today's topic, we're going to talk about inventory. You hear all over the place, inventory is growing, days on market are increasing. There's so many misnomers and myths out there about real estate inventory that it's very, very important that you dive into the data. I want to talk today about normal listing inventory, where it's at right now, where it's at historically, what has happened since the pandemic started to our inventory here in Boise both for sale and available and available to sell, which is a very, very important component that nobody seems to be talking about. And then after we're done, you can draw your own conclusions, but I'll certainly give you my opinion that, no, we're not out of control. We're basically getting right back to where we were pre-COVID. You cannot go back and say, well, last we're 130% over last year. That's true, where it was a couple of weeks ago. It's not right now, but it was a couple of weeks ago. But last year was the historic lows, period. No matter how far back you go, it's the lowest amount of homes we've had for sale relative to the total number of home in the area. You go back to 20 or 21, same thing. They were less and less. You have to go all the way back to 2019, pre-COVID, to see where we were at. Now, 2020 prior to COVID breaking out was turning out or starting up to be a very, very good year. We really liked the trends we were seeing in inventory, the trends we were seeing in buyers, the mortgage applications we saw. It was on solid footing going into 2020, and then we all know what happened. But to give today proper context, we need to go back and look at the data because, as we all know, the data trend is your friend as long as you pay attention to the data. So I want to jump over to a chart that a gentleman, one of the three people that I actually pay a lot of attention to in real estate economics, his name's Lance Lambert. He works with Fortune Magazine. And Lance did this chart. He and I were having a, there we go. He and I were having a conversation on Twitter a couple weeks ago. He was putting up a lot of different cities and we started talking about Boise. And he goes, it's 130% over where it used to be. I'm like, okay, that's true. That was last year. But where were we compared to 2019? Which is a very important question. You know, he we ran the five-year. He pulled it off Realtor.com. This is normal MLS data. But as you can see at the bottom of the chart, Lamps put it together. He published it on his Twitter channel. I believe it came out in Fortune as well. But this is the Boise MSA. And the MSA stands for Metropolitan Statistical Area. And it's not just the city of Boise. It also includes Eagle and Meridian and, you know, parts of Boise County, parts of Jim County, parts of Canyon County, parts of Ada County. You know, all the major cities you think of, but it rolls them all up into one big number. So you have to unpack it a little bit. It wound up being more work than I thought it was going to be, but I did it anyway. Here's Lance's chart, and it shows us the bar- dark blue lines you see is January of each year. It starts at January of 2017 ends on January of 2023. As you can see, pandemic started a couple months into, you see the inventory was climbing nicely early in the year too, in February, and then pandemic hit and it dropped down, dropped down to where in January of 2021, we had 569 homes. That was it. That's as bad as it gets. And then it climbs up from there. And then we saw the spike at the end of summer. Then you saw a little bit more business in the back end of the year. And then, of course, 2022 started off, it dropped again low to January, and then it started coming up, and then you had the fear of missing out. As soon as Jerome Powell started talking about, I'm going to reset the housing market and rates were going to start coming up, there was a huge surge. And then, yeah, we actually broke 4,000 units, which to get this high, you actually have to go back to the Great Recession as far as total number of units. There's a whole different cause and effect here, though. This was everybody who was thinking, oh, I've got time, market's super hot, I'll take my time getting my house ready, you know, or, or let's wait one more year and see if we can't get some more money or whatever. But all of those people realized all at the same time, hey, <laughs> you know what, the market's going to shift and we're going to miss out. So they rushed to market. And as you can see, we, had the, we actually still had the normal seasonality in that, you know, it started peaking July, August, September, you know, started coming down in October, November, December, but it got supercharged on steroids just because of the shift in the market everybody saw happening and they all jumped in to get there. But if you look down to the end of December or beginning of January last month, uh, you know, we're 2,521 units, you know, that's even higher than what we had in 2019, January, we had 2305. So let's talk about that for a second. What happened? besides COVID? Well, as we all know, a lot of people moved here all during this time, and we've had just an insane amount of new construction here. If you go on Ada County's assessor site, they have some incredible tools. It's one of the best sites I've ever found for a county assessor office, so kudos to them. But it doesn't do the data polls that I wanted. So I wound up talking to Jim over there at the assessor's office and he he did a custom poll for me. And then I went over to Canyon County and I had to do a public records request. And the, 
the public records request is fine. I, I don't mind doing that. It just took a little time to get more of the data through. But they don't have a drop down where you can pull to see how many homes were built each year. Because I think that's an important context point to know, okay, what was our baseline going into COVID? How many houses do we have going into COVID? How many were built each year? What's that total increase in the number of homes we have in our market? And now let's look at the increase in listings we have. Now, has the listings kept in track with the new construction or are the listings just wildly out? You know, say we had 10% new construction, we have 50% new listings. That's a different conversation. But let's dive into this and see what we had. So if we go back to our data here, okay, we're back. This is Lance's chart and you can see 2521 was the number and that's 2135, well, actually 2305. Let's work at that number because that was January of 2019. So we had 2305 for the last year not affected by COVID. So we're up about 220 houses or 220 units. All right, so for Ada County, and again, this is Boise, Meridian, Eagle, Cuna, Star, Garden City, etc. At the end of 2018, we had 146,182 units. Now, these are hard numbers. In 2019, we ended with 148,000. So what I want to look at more than anything is the just new construction. This is single family units. You know, it's basically houses and uh, not, multi, count, not counting multifamily, not counting anything other than just single family residential units. So in 2019, we increased the total number of single family residences by 1.46%. In 2020, which was the banner year, we added almost 5,000 units, which was an increase of 3.23%. 2021, we added 4,094 units, which is an increase of another 2.6%. And then in 2022, we added 3,853 units. So we ended in Ada County with 161,000 units at the end of 2022. So that's a 9.35% increase or 15,000 homes that we added in Ada County. Now we go over to Canyon County. Now this one, this is an estimate. It's not as close as Ada County was simply because there's a couple of municipalities that do the permitting instead of the county. These are not 100% accurate, but they're very, very close. And they're certainly close enough for what we've been talking about, which was this video. So if you assume that the end of 2018, we had 65,200 single family units in Canyon County, we added 2,300 in 2019, which is an additional 3.4%, 2,753 in 2020, which is an additional 3.9, almost 4%. 2021 added 3,251, which is the biggest year for an additional 4.42%. And then last year we put in 2,500 units roughly. So that's another 3.29%. So 14.22% increase in Canyon County alone. Pretty sizable numbers. We've got 9.35% in ADA and we've got 14.22% in Canyon. So if you go to the total, and again, this is the total MSA between ADA and Canyon counties, not counting the overflow that you would have out of Boise and Jim counties. Basically, we added 25,880 units. Almost 26,000 single family homes were built in Boise from 2000, the end of 2018 to the end of the 2022, that four year period. So that's an increase of 10.91%. So let's say 11% just to round up to catch everything. So I'm going to skim back over here. And here we are. So if you add, you got 2,305 homes at the end of January, 2019. So if that's the homes listed. So you add 10% to that, you're going to be at 2,560 and change. And we're, you know, in January of this year, we were at 2,521. So we didn't even come up the full 11% or 10.91% to where we would be in line or over with the increase in, in units. So we actually increased more units than we have units listed. And I looked at this morning and, and there's, you know, there's under a thousand homes for sale in Ada County right now. And we've had 14 new homes come up in the last few days. Any growth in inventory you're seeing is coming from days on market, meaning that they, the homes are sitting out there longer. It's not that new listings, new listings are down every week and they have been for the last four months. So we haven't seen the seasonality we usually see in February and March where we see new homes. And again, March is coming. So let's see what happens later on this week or next week. There might be a spike. Who knows? We'll see. But the interest rates are the key here. Inventory is not out of control. Actually, inventory is balanced right now. I'm comfortable with it. You know, who am I? It doesn't matter. But as somebody who makes their money in real estate, you know, all day long and has for almost 20 years now, I'm comfortable with the inventory levels based on how much homes, how many homes were built how much traffic we have, things like that. So we've gotten back to maybe not a perfectly normal inventory level because we still are low, but the market's getting more balanced, which is good. Interest rates, as I said earlier, are the key now because two or three weeks ago, we'd seen almost a 30% spike in mortgage applications. And then this week and last week, we're down over 18% because it went from, I think the high in October was like seven and a quarter, almost seven and a quarter percent for a 30-year mortgage. And then it dropped 
to in January, it only got a couple of days that actually snuck below six, but it was right about six, six and a quarter, somewhere in there. And that really spiked the mortgage applications. We saw far more traffic. We started seeing multiple offers again here, which is great. And then last week, as we all know, they raised the interest rates or a couple weeks ago. And boom, it slowed everything down again. Traffic's down a little bit, but mortgage applications were down 18%. New listings, nationally speaking, our, our number of listings dropped by 6,800 units. So the interest rates, you know, no matter what else is going on right now, interest rates are the biggest driver of traffic for buyers in the market. You have to understand we're not going to see a flood of inventory, no matter, no matter what the Crash Brothers say about how all the, the inventory, the shadow foreclosure inventory, I mean, there's so many labels for it. Every year you hear, oh, this is it. This is the one. This is where all the foreclosures are coming from. This is where all the bankruptcies are coming from. It's not going to happen like that. We don't have the inventory. And more importantly, if you look at the total number of current homeowners, well north of 60%, probably closer to 70% of them are in a 30-year fixed mortgage that's less than 4%. So you have to ask the question, what's going to make that homeowner give up his 3% or her 3% or 2 point whatever percent and change it out for a 65 or 7% mortgage? Short of death, divorce, or a job transfer, it's probably not going to happen. So there's not going to be this huge flood of inventory coming on like we saw in 2008, those were credit for sales, for lack of a better term. Basically, people, the vast majority of the homes that flooded the market and crashed the prices and everything else had what we call pick a payment loans or liar loans or whatever you want to call them. But they had any option. Washington Mutual and Countrywide were the two biggest uh, offenders on this, if you will. People had a choice. They could pay their full mortgage payment, which would be all your interest plus your principal. You could pay interest only. Or you could only pay half your interest. And the problem with paying half your interest, it made everything very, very affordable. But that other half the interest you didn't pay rolled into your principal. And once your principal came up to where it was 125% of the original loan value, everything reset into a fixed 30-year period. You didn't have any choice anymore. And your payment, that if half your interest payment was $2,500, now all of a sudden you're you know close to $10,000 on your main payment. And of course, most people couldn't take that kind of financial hit going from $2,500 a month mortgage to $10,000 a month mortgage. So they had to sell because they couldn't afford their houses anymore. That's what got us into the liar loans. That and the fact that half the people that had loans should have never been sold a house in the first place. Today, underwriting is very, very good. We have you know, the strongest credit profiles we've ever had. Everybody still has incredible equity positions. So even if the market comes down, most people don't care because they're not planning on selling. And the only time you really need to be laser focused on your home's value is when you're selling or when you're doing a refinance, cash out refinance, something like that. In conclusion, I know you were waiting for that part. We're fine. The inventory is not out of control. Yes, there's more homes than you've seen the last couple of years, but this is where we kind of need to be for some kind of stability. A normal inventory market has six months worth of inventory. We're still not there, but it's if it feels... If, as a realtor, it feels more comfortable than the last three years have. I, you, there's nothing worse than having to tell your clients, okay, you're approved for a million dollars. That's great. We need to look at 850 because if, by the time we get into the multiple offer situation and the overbids and everything else, we're going to be bumping up against your limit anyway. Right now, we can actually say, hey, oh, your, your credit or your approvals, 750,000. Great. Let's go look at 750,000 homes. Million dollar limit. Great. Let's go look at million dollar homes. Now, buyers actually... They don't have the advantage, but they're certainly in a much better position than they've been in for the last three years, which is fantastic. So, if you're looking to sell your home, let's have a conversation. It, it, it may not be the right time for you, or it may be. If you're looking to buy a home, it's better than it's been in the last three years. You know, we can talk about options that are out there for mortgages. We can talk about lenders. There's all kinds of conversation to have, but... You know, you want to talk to an experienced agent. You really want to talk to somebody who's been around the block, who's been through a bad market before or a shifting market before. So you have experience guiding you. Something most people don't know is that the vast majority of agents who are out in the market right now have only entered since 2011 or 2012. They've only seen the market go up, 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 up until last year. Those, those of us who went through the Great Recession and uh, all the other little bumps and, and wiggles we've had since then, or even there was a couple before the Great Recession, have the experience to know what's going on and will guide you and make sure that the, the purchase you make is the best deal that you can score there. Or if you're selling, that you actually absolutely maximize the money you receive on the back end when you sell the house. 
So as we've been talking about, context matter. The data trend is always your friend. May not like the facts, but they're still facts, right? Right. Please like this video. Subscribe to our channel if you liked what you saw. If there's another topic you'd like to see us cover, please put it down in the comments or send us an email or a DM. We'll be happy to do it. Make sure you do, again, subscribe to our channel. Hit that bell so you get an update every time we put something new out. And thank you for watching. We look forward to talking to you soon. Bye.